Hey there, Adrian Rosebrock here from PyMageSearch.com, and today we're going to be talking about April tag detection with Python. April tags are a tag of fiducial marker that you can uh, detect in images. They help you do things like uh, camera calibration, 3D reconstruction, uh, object detection, tracking, navigation. There are a lot of things that we use these types of tags for, and I'm super, super excited to be discussing them with you in this screencast. But before we get there, I wanna, I wanna take a second and just talk about this concept of discipline. The, the concept of discipline and how it applies to every aspect of your life from studying computer vision and deep learning, you know, all the way to like the personal things such as your physical fitness, your overall health. And it may seem strange talking about, about the two together, but they're incredibly interlinked. A few weeks ago, I, I had this uh, this intro rant where I was discussing about the importance of just getting started with computer vision and deep learning. That if you if you're serious about just getting started, then just get started. Stop making excuses for not getting started. Stop you know binge watching Netflix at the end of the day because it's easy. Stop scrolling through your through your social media feed, feeds at the end of the day because it's easy. And if you just want to curl up and go to sleep at the end of the night because it's easy, well, you, need, you might want to consider how you're investing your time. And you might want to consider your priorities. Are you serious about learning computer vision and deep learning? Or is this something that you're just passively doing for fun? If it's just for fun, then great. All the power to you. But if you're serious about it, you need to have that discipline. You need to show up every day. You need to put in the work you need to recover from the next day and you have to repeat it week over week, month over month, month over, year over year, and over time that really adds up. For me, I was able to complete my PhD in under four years because I applied this principle of discipline. For Pyramid Search, the largest computer vision and deep learning website online, I grew it to be that way over the course of five to six years and it's still growing today. I didn't put it online, and on day two, all of a sudden, it's this big thing. No, it took me grinding on it. It kept me pushing on it, and it took years to actually do it, and it took discipline to get there. It's not as simple and, and easy as showing up for a day, working hard, and being done. It takes discipline over time to actually do that. Discipline is, is like a muscle. It's like when you work out and you're, you know, you're doing bicep curls or bench presses, at first, you're not so good at it. Your form is weak, and you first have to get your form correct. And then once your form is correct, you start to notice gains. You start to see yourself pushing more weight. You start to feel yourself getting stronger. You see a difference in your body, and ideally, that difference makes you feel encouraged and more powerful and more motivated to keep digging in. The same thing applies when, with any type of education, whether it's computer vision or, or history or, or art or humanities is going to be hard initially at first because you don't have that foundation. You're still in the process of putting that foundation together. But once that foundation is done, the rest of the house goes up quickly. If you've ever seen uh, construction workers build a house, it's amazing how long it feels like for that construction to be laid. It seems like it's taking forever. But once it's done, the rest of the house just shoots up because the groundwork is laid. And the same thing is true with discipline. It's a muscle that you have to flex over time. And I hope my hope is that if you're following this blog and you're serious about learning computer vision and deep learning, that you're ready to flex that muscle. So with that said, we're going to dive, in, dive into April tag detection with Python. I have a, a few examples of April tags here that I want to show you before we, before we get too far into this tutorial. Now you can see that uh, an April tag is similar to an uh, RQ marker, which we'll also be covering in a, in a separate tutorial, but it's a rectangular region, a square with a black black ground, and it has these white, this white pattern on the front of it. This is the foreground of the marker. And as you can see, this is, this is not like a natural occurring marker in nature. You wouldn't be going through the woods and like all of a sudden see this marker you know, naturally occurring there on the tree bark. You know, this is something that is human generated, it's purposefully generated, and it's purposely placed on an object such that a computer vision or image processing algorithm can act upon it. Each marker has this black background uh, border surrounding it here to kind of separate 
the pattern itself and make it easier to, to detect, assuming there's sufficient contrast. There are tons of libraries that exist to actually detect these, uh, but the predominant one is right here from the University of Michigan. This is uh, the original work for these for these types of fiducial markers, and you can see that they're placed on these uh, these robots. You you see April tag detection a lot in uh, in robotics applications, uh, camera camera applications, um, object size and estimation, uh, distance measurement. Um, uh, the the whole notion of autonomous vehicles like one of my favorite examples is imagine like you're working in a in a warehouse at Amazon for instance and they're using these autonomous forklifts or going around the warehouse uh, picking up different pallets moving them around you could actually use uh, April tags to actually help those um, actually help those robots navigate because you can see a marker in front of it that says stop or a marker in front of it that says, you know, right turn, left turn, or a marker that is like an emergency stop where if it sees it, then it's like a 911 emergency and the robot completely, completely shuts down. They, and these markers are just incredibly fast to, to detect. They are very fast to detect, they're robust. You can change your viewpoint angle, you can change lighting conditions, and just by the nature of how these tags you know, exist, very, very powerful, and you'll see them, you'll see them a lot in computer vision applications. And I have an example of one right here, actually. This is, hold this up. This is a color correction card, which I'll be showing you how to use in a future Python search tutorial. And if you look at the, the four corners, you know, you can actually see these, these uh, April tag markers or these uh, ARCU markers. And what the, the goal here is that a computer vision or a computer vision algorithm would detect each of these April tags and apply a perspective transform and give you a top down view of this card. And we know whatever color that's behind here, you can actually use this, uh, this grid here to actually perform a color correction and give you a more true representation of what, what that color is. We'll be discussing that in a, in a future tutorial, but I want, I want to introduce the concept of April tags and ARCU markers now so that you understand them and you're not surprised when you see them for the first time. So, so studying these markers, you might be thinking, wow, these like look similar to QR codes. Like why, why not just use a QR code? Why go through all using all this trouble? There's tons of libraries for, for QR codes. The ZBar library, great, great library, very easy to use. And like, actually, if I flip over, if I flip over this uh, color correction card, there is a QR code on the back of it that if you scan it with your phone, will give you instructions on how to use this card with, a, with Pantone's mobile application. So if you're thinking like, wait, why did they bother putting a QR code here on the back, but it, why, why not just put the you know, four QR codes here, just detect it and be done with it? The funny thing is, these, these April tags, these ARPU markers, they, they really only store a small amount of data anywhere between four to 12, maybe 16 bits, depending on what type of marker you're using. On the other hand, these QR codes store about three kilobytes of data. You can store a lot more information, you know, orders of magnitude more information inside one of these QR codes. That's why we can embed things like, you know, uh, hyperlinks into QR codes. You wouldn't be able to do that with these April tags. So that's, again, raises the question, why are we bothering with April tags? And we have something more, uh, we have, something more data storage friendly, something that store more data in a QR code. Why not use the QR code in the first place? Well, it's kind of a situation where it's a feature, not a bug, right? So the more data you're storing in the QR code, the more chances there are for that data to be misinterpreted. So if there's, you know, a shift in lighting conditions, if there's a viewpoint change, if, you know, any of those, you know, typical scenarios occur, then that distorts the reading of the QR code, which can therefore distort the actual value in it. So you might not get the correct value pulled out. These April tags are, um, are, are different in that sense because they're, they're meant to be robust. So yes, they don't store as much data, but you can change your, your lighting conditions. You can change your viewpoint uh, viewing angle. You can distort them slightly, and yet they're still going to be detected with high robustness and, and high accuracy. So. Again, QR codes storing data, these April tags and ARCU tags for, um, 
for just detection purposes only. And then once you, you, they're detected, you can perform any number of operations on them, including camera calibration and 3D positioning and, and whatnot, and, uh, and augmented reality. That's another great, great example of using these tags. So we'll discuss all of that in, in future tutorials, but today we're really just going to focus on this concept of detecting these markers and images. And you know, going back to the Pyman Search blog, detecting markers and images, like that's not something that requires April tags or ARCU tags or anything special. For example, if I show you this tutorial on finding the distance uh, from, a, from a camera to a specific object, you can see this piece of paper here. That's an 8 by 12 piece of paper. And if I can detect that piece of paper, then I know what the dimensions are. It's 8, it's eight and a half by 12, and therefore I can start to infer, infer the distance of, uh, of the camera to that specific piece of paper. Here's another, another great example where we're measuring the distance between objects. I know what the spatial dimensions are of this United States quarter, so as long as I can detect that quarter, I can infer the distance to, to other objects. Um, and the same, the same principle applies um, to, what, to what we're doing here, only instead of using this you know, you know, business card or a U.S. quarter or this piece of paper, we're using a marker that's actually far easier to detect. So again, that's why uh, you might see these these example tags out in the wild, you know, maybe you're, you know, walking around and you look up at the at a telephone pole or a street light or something and you see these types of tags, it's because some sort of computer vision algorithm is using them to detect them, to do calibration, to do reconstruction, distance measurement. There's something behind the scenes is actually using these, these tags. So with that said, you know, let's learn how to actually uh, detect them in input images. So here's our project directory structure. There's a single Python script we're going to review today. It's called detect April tag .py. And in here we have two example images of April tags that we want, uh, we want to detect. Let's dive in. Actually, before we get there, uh, I want to say the library that we're going to use here is a pip installable package. It's called April tag. It's compatible with uh, Python 2, Python 3. It works with OpenCV images, which is, which is really awesome. Makes it easy, really easy to integrate into and to open CV projects. Now, that said, there is an open CV implementation inside the open CV library that can handle April tags and ARCU tags. I'm going to cover that in a separate tutorial because it's a series of tutorials that, that discusses how you generate April tags, how you, uh, how you read them, how you detect them, and then finally, how you can kind of do this guessing method where you're not sure what type of tag it is. And it's just a little hack that you can utilize to actually um, just get a good idea of what family of tags a, a given image has. But for the time being, let's stick with the basic April tag uh, Python package. You can do it. You can install it with a simple, a simple pip command if you have it installed on your system. Just run that command. Go ahead and install in your uh, in your Python environment. Alternatively, um, you can you can use Pyman Search Plus that includes Jupyter Notebooks pre-configured to run on Google Cloud. It'll automatically install that package for you. 